So I came out here today and I was uh, cleaning this gravestone off. Um, I do it quite often. It's quite peaceful out here. Sort of out in the country in Tennessee. When I was cleaning it off, your brain gets to wandering and I was thinking, we all got together today, all my kids got together and well, all of us that were available. <laughs> And we got together and we did a Mother's Day thing and, you know, watching all the kids get together and all the grandkids and, and, uh, then coming over here and, and cleaning off the stone, noticing two brothers. And I got to thinking, you know, about family and about brothers and remembering when Ryan passed, how close we got as a family. Um, you know, the kids, they miss them. And yet, you know, after that, the kids are even closer than before. Um, if one needs something, there's four siblings there to do it. I mean, they just have banded together, um, so tight knit and watching them today, <laughs> Shelly's kids, Jamie's kids, you know, there's a lot of kids running around and Shelly's kids need something. Jamie runs over there and helps them, you know, Jamie's kids need something. I mean, it's just like a great big family. And I think that's how all of our families are supposed to be. Um, and then I got thinking about the whole land issue um, with my dad's family. I'm thinking about his brothers came from a family of five brothers. Five, five boys, sorry. And when my dad passed, it made me wonder, did his brothers get as close as I've seen my kids get? Did they take care of each other? Did they watch out for each other? Were they their brother's keeper? Were they their brother's widow's keeper? Were they their brother's fatherless children's keeper? So as we've discussed before, um, the farmland, um, for anybody that doesn't know, when my dad passed, and he was working for his brother, Roy. And when the accident occurred, um, I, their father leaned the responsibility on his son, Roy. So many times you can, you can, look through the ministry or you can remember what he said at the time and he put so much responsibility on Roy. Um, and I don't think that leaves the other boys out at all because we're all our brother's keepers. But the responsibility goes in a very special place. You know, as a family, you feel so much more responsible for your children, for your nephews, for your nieces. And when a death occurs in a family, how much more responsible you feel for your brother's widow. So I think I'm making this video today to address, maybe to, to, to challenge my dad's brothers. Um, they knew the responsibility of taking care of Ken's children was, was placed on Roy. Um, they knew when Roy went out of fellowship, that they went to him and they took away his trusteeship. Uh, he was he was the trustee over some money in an account for, for Ken's children. And they removed him from that and they got those assets back. But they also knew there was land. He had gone to his father and got money to buy this land for Ken's children. He was establishing a legacy for Ken's children. And he held it over Wes and Kenny's head. They worked for him. They worked for him every hour that they were not in school or that they were not in meeting. They were at that ranch working. And Roy held it over their heads. He said this was, it was going to be for them. That was the reason he didn't pay them. Um, those boys worked for him for three to four years after his own kids quit working for him. Because they stayed in the church. And my brothers didn't. I talked to somebody just recently and she said, those kids work like a dog at that farm. And after four years, 
West joined the military, Ken joined the military because they weren't getting paid. It didn't look like the future was there right then. Even though Roy said he was building it up for them, it didn't look like there was a future there for them at that moment. They always expected at some point Roy would call them up and say, well, I'm ready to turn this back to you. But over the years, that call never came. Um, and so sort of the first investigating we did and wondering about that land was after Roy passed and his um, the law firm taking care of his will sent out copies of his will to the family uh, after we heard the copies had gone out we reached out to the law firm and bought our own copy asked for our own copy had to pay for it and we see in the will there's only 1,800 acres or 1,750 acres. There should have been 2,850 acres of land. And it's sitting in the residue of a will. Um, he's written his own kids out of his will. Written his first wife out of his will. And so we start digging around and find out that in the early 2000s, he made a series of very bad choices, very bad decisions that got himself in financial ruin to the point he was going to have to declare bankruptcy. So he sold 1,100 acres of land, 1,100 acres that he knew was the legacy for Ken Symington's kids. Imagine. Because of poor choices, reckless choices, DUIs, misdemeanors, uh, class action lawsuits because you put half as many screws in a bin as you're supposed to put in. Uh, because you didn't pay the lawyer from one case, and so the lawyer has to come back and sue you to get his money in the next case. Poor choices, reckless choices. And because of that, you take half of your brother's legacy and you sell it to get yourself out of financial ruin. So there's 1,750 acres of land sitting in the residue of a will. And my message to Ron Symington, Vern Symington, and Walt Symington is, do you have the intestinal fortitude to reach out to Bruce Hales and stand up and say, do you have the intestinal fortitude to say, we're going to be our brother's keeper. We're going to reach out to you and we're going to explain to you what went wrong. Because Bruce Hales returned Roy Symington to the fellowship. And after that, in the time that he returned him and right after, was the time period where Roy made all these reckless choices. And are you going to stand up and go to Bruce Hales and say, we've got to put this right? Do you have the morals? Do you have the righteous judgment to be your brother's keeper? To be your nephew's keeper's? To be your niece's keepers? Do you have the righteousness to tell the truth? To reach out to Bruce Hales and say, for the sake of our brother's widow, we know what's right and we want your help to put this right, to, to fix this situation? And then to Bruce Hales, do you have the moral courage to stand up and say, I messed up? I brought him back. Maybe you didn't understand all the bad choices that he made. We personally know some of them were made very crystal clear to you because we told them to you and we wrote you. And so my question is now, as you proclaim to be a mainstream Christian church, are you Christian enough to take care to take care of the, of the legacy that was left for Ken Symington's children and to his brothers. Do you have the righteousness to stand up and admit that you know that was supposed to be for Ken Symington's children? So for all the course of all the neglect, for all the throwing them out of fellowship and then afterwards saying, oops, we shouldn't have done that. Taking it to the assembly, calling me and saying, we messed up. Well, you messed up again. And now, do you have 
the courage to stand up and say, to own it, and to put it right. That's my challenge. You may decide you don't, you don't. You're going to ignore it um, for whatever your decision is. And, I mean, I can't make you make a right choice. That's on you. But I can tell you, if you decide you're not going to stand up and you're not going to address it and you're not going to put it right, you don't have to answer to me in a coming day. You answer to God. You don't answer to me. So if you choose to leave it, that's on you. Um, we'll pursue what we can pursue. Not as a matter of, of needing the land or in any other way, but as a matter of policy, as a matter of standing up for what was rightly provided for us, provided for the boys, and not been turned over to them. As a policy of that, we are going to stand up for as long as we can and as much as we can. And the rest of it will rest on you. It's your decision.